university founded on the site of an airport, reaching new heights, it's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. What up, baby? Let's go, spring ball. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Good, good strike, good strike. Let's go. Make him hold that to get the arm. Monday, go. Good, 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 good. Push up, push up. I know that I motivate him. Motivate him, I'm a threat. Inside and front, guys. Well, Daniel, the starting five. A tight end left, a tight end right. Hey, do what you do best. Hey, do what you do best. Stronger together. Innovative. Pushing ourselves to think outside the box. We love to compete. Any team. Any time. And any place. Inspiring others through service and achievement. Comfortable leading in a different way. Preparing for life beyond athletics. Determined to achieve our vision. Building the next generation. And we aren't afraid of doing it our way. This is the CUSA way. Let's go! What's up, Panther fans? This is James Morgan, quarterback of your FIU football team. I'm inviting you to come out this Friday, April 12th, to see the Spring Showcase. We need you there. We need you loud. Paws up. Well, the madness of March has nearly come to a close. One more game left in the college hoop season, and then the college sports landscape, landscape will turn to baseball and lacrosse and whatnot. For college basketball coaches, the, the attention will turn to recruiting here pretty soon at the end of that period. This is Panther Talk Live at the Graham Center once again as we move forward through the end of the semester. Glad to have you with us. AJ Ricketts, Jeremy Ballard. This is Panther Talk Live brought to you by the Florida Lottery and unofficially, of course, every week by Cafe Bustelo. Glad to have you with us. Uh, Coach, we've come to the end of another season, year one here at the helm for you at FIU. You've had a little bit of time now to take a step back and gather some more perspective on the season when you reflect on your first season here, what comes to mind, your impressions of the first campaign, and what you guys were able to do this year, a 20-win season. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that our three seniors um, get, to, get to go out on a winning note. You know, the, no one affiliated with FIU basketball had experienced a winning season before. So for these guys to win 20 games, um, to be able to go to the postseason, get the school's first postseason history, and, and really set the foundation for building a new legacy here at FIU, I, I'm really proud of that. Um, Brian Beard, um, Elhaji Ding, Mike Douglas, those guys are all special people. Yeah. So just just really glad for them in their senior year and what had kind of been a turbulent time probably, you know, this last 12 months sure. for them and getting a new coach and all of that, that it really ended on a positive note. So I'm um, probably the happiest about that. You want your team to be playing – you're the best basketball towards the end of the season every year, peaking towards the end, and you guys are winning a large percentage of your games come February and March. But how do you how do you feel the the identity of the team may have changed throughout the course of the season? How did it grow? How did your team change and develop throughout the course of this year toward towards the end there? Well, I think we sent a message early in the year, like this is who this is who we are. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're going to play fast. We're going to be aggressive on, on both ends, and so I don't think it took long to establish that, but it took a while for our guys to understand what truly goes into winning day in day out um, preparation and practice uh, you know preparation and scouting meetings uh, the mentality the sacrifices you have to make and and our maturity um, our unselfishness really grew as the year went on 
and of course the, the first postseason victory in the history of the program. You go back to that night in San Marcos, you know, how, how jubilant, how fun was that locker room scene? You had a lot of fun locker rooms yeah. after a number of comebacks this season, and that, that game in Texas was, was no doubt a part uh, of that journey. You know, a special moment, I'm sure it was. Yeah, I mean, we were fired up. I mean, make no mistake about it. Texas State, um, you know, had claimed to be maybe the best team in, in the tournament. Yeah. And so for us to get sent to, um, you know, their home court and for a team that won 24 games, a team that had really dominated their conference for, for most of the year, and for us to be able to get that win, um, you know, th th that was huge for us. <laughs> we got one of your guys next year, uh, Cam Corcoran. He was in the background there. He might have slipped in on the video. So that, it, that comes perfectly into our next topic here, Coach, uh, the roster makeup for next year. You're going to have to replace some guys. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. Brian Beard right here uh, on your screen, he comes to mind. Uh, All-conference player. He was just in that three-on-three -three tournament up in yeah. Minneapolis. I think he, he had a good time up there. Uh, roster makeup next year. You lose Beard. Elhaji, Mike, uh, the seniors graduating. Willie going to do grad, his grad years elsewhere. And Philip Smith also heading out. So you got five leaving the program. Going to reload. Obviously, Cam's one of those guys that comes into the program. But what, what are your thoughts in terms of putting together the team and what you got coming back? Yeah, well, like I said, we lose some special pieces, uh, especially those seniors and, and, and what they brought to the table in terms of, uh, you know, just maturity and experience. Um, and, you know, you, you're not going to – you're not going to replace a Brian Beard yeah. um, just by one person. But I, I do believe we can have a more complete team. I believe everyone returning is going to have a better understanding of what our identity is, um, you know, a, a better understanding of what it takes to win and all that they have to do in this all season to so that we can so that we can win more next year. Yeah. And, um, you know, as, as awesome as it was to be playing in that CIT, hey, um, we all want to be playing in, the, in March Madness with NCA. So, um in the big dance. So we'll all be building towards that. Um, we're hard on the recruiting trail to bring some guys in. You know, we, we really want to make sure that um, we can improve our shooting. Um, you know, we, we need to improve on, on the, def uh, the, the defensive glass. Um, and if we can do those things, I think it can lead to a lot more wins. Wasn't able to catch it. Did you see any of that three-on-three -three tournament that, that Brian was in? The, this past? That's a pretty cool setup. They, yeah. they were in the Mall of America, yeah. I think, and it's just a big circle and multiple levels of fans watching right. that. Yeah, and, no, and, and it, he no, had a pretty good week. <laughs> he did, he did, and they had a good team. I, yeah. I enjoyed watching them, and, and I, you know, I'm not sure who ended up winning, but you know, I think that the CAA, CAA may have, may yeah, have well, that, it, yeah, and that's who beat them twice, yeah. and, and and they were both really close games, and that CAA team was really good. So I was glad that Brian got to yeah. experience that, going to the Final Four, um, being around other great players, and, and and really being able to soak that in. I, I was really excited that he had that opportunity, and it was well deserved, and, and uh, he proved that by how he played. Yeah, yeah, the images. The video images were, were funny. Like these guys have all graduated, and, and you know, cash cash is part of the perk of going yeah, to this absolutely. thing. You get you get some cash as you, you keep advancing, and, and if you win, they just give you a suitcase full of cash. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's all, it's all it around. It's all expenses it's paid. Exactly, it's pretty fun. Um, yeah, you know, they, they pay for your hotel. Um, you, you you get money if you win. Yeah. Um, so it, it was an awesome opportunity, and they made the most of it. And, yeah. And Brian got to play with uh, a guy that was conference two first team all conference players, the Conference USA Player of the Year, yeah. Xavier Stapleton, who who everyone in our program has a ton of respect for from FAU. Great so battles. It, yeah, it was, it, it, it was cool to see. Probably weird. I'm sure those two, I mean, they went after it back and forth. Now they have the same jersey on. <laughs> yeah, you know, nice. but it's, you know what's, yeah. what's interesting yeah. about Brian Beard, yeah. as competitive as he is and as hard as he played in those games, like it's, it seemed like everyone always, it seemed like everyone in the league likes him. Yeah. Um, everyone <laughs> in the league certainly respects him, yeah. uh, but they definitely liked him too. And, and, and you could see that. That's the kind of guy you want on court. your team. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We, we, we've talked about next year's squad a little bit. And one of the reinforcements is he signed his uh, national letter of intent a couple of months ago. Dante Wilcox out of Oxbridge Academy in West Palm Beach. Excited to get this guy into the program to take a look at, at some of his highlights. Coach, he's a four-year starter in Oxbridge, a two-year captain has some good leadership, nearly average double-double yeah. the last three years. I know you're excited about getting this guy into the program. Yeah, well, what I love about him is his tenacity. Um, he, you know, he, he's a guy that quite honestly could have helped us this year with just his, you know, uh, how ferocious he, he competes, how ferocious he is on the glass, um, how athletic and physical he is. Um, he, he's really going to fit in right away. He can really run. He's a versatile guy. He's a big-time leaper. Um, he, he's got a great body coming in as, yeah. a, you know, as a high school senior. He already weighs, I think, 219 pounds. <laughs> um, so we're, we're very excited about Dante. Dante didn't take long to commit to us. You know, he was excited to be an FIU Panther, and we always want to bring people 
to FIU that want to be at uh, that want to be at FIU and really want to be a Panther. Now the dead period ends soon, right? You, you were talking about it, so you guys are going to get back on the road here pretty soon. Yeah, we're well, yeah. back on the road and bringing people in for yeah. visits, yeah. and um, you know we, we got a lot of work to do on the recruiting trail, but we've done a lot of work to sure. put ourselves in position to get some good players and to go along with the, with Dante and his class and and help replace uh, some of the things that we lose. Watched any bit at uh, watched anything at the tournament the past couple of weeks? Final Four, Elite Eight. You've been watching much of the tournament? Yeah, well, I mean, I've been watching. We had a lot of connections here at the tournament, VCU, yeah, you know, Richard, Richard, Richard Patino. Yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts of the tourney so far? Uh, I mean, it's been an awesome tournament. Yeah, awesome. I, I mean, the, the drama has been terrific. And, you know, so it's it, it's always great to watch as a coach to pick up on things, pick up on trends um, that, you know, other people are, are, are using to be successful. Um, and, and then to follow people that you care about in this business. And, and uh, hey, we're, 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 all, we're all in this profession because we love it. So, you know, I love to watch basketball. Yeah. I love to watch great uh, compelling basketball, and, and the NCAA tournament is nothing if not compelling. And I've, I've heard a little bit of disappointment over the perceived lack of star power in the national championship and the seemingly unglamorous championship game. I'm fascinated to watch this tonight. I always love watching pack line defense, and then obviously Texas Tech is doing something pretty good. Their defense is a lot of fun tonight. You think anyone's got a particular edge tonight? No, I mean, to me, yeah. it, it, it's a toss-up. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, these are two of the – uh, best defensive teams in the country, uh, two of the best coaches in the country. So it's it's going to be a war tonight. And, you know, it might not be aesthetically pleasing to <laughs> a lot of people, but um, like I said, I think it will certainly be compelling. Uh, I think it will be a competitive game. And, and, and uh, both both teams are full of ferocious competitors. So it'll be good. They don't play the tempo we play at. <laughs> no, they <laughs> don't. It'll be a little it's, slower it's, game than if you're yeah. used to watching FIU. It, it, it's very different <laughs> than us. Uh, pack line for yeah. UVA, the tempo for both teams. Uh, but hey, we're, we're proud of our uniqueness. I, yeah, I think I, love it, it. I think yeah. it gives us an edge, you and um, you better believe if, if we played one of those teams, I mean, it'd be a battle of tempo, and we'd be wanting to make make those guys play a lot yeah. faster than than what they do. And um, I was real interested in that Auburn is a team very very similar to us. Yeah. They force a lot of turnovers. They play at a really fast rate. They shoot a lot of threes, and they actually lost the tempo battle against UVA. But still, as we all know, should have won that game. Yeah. So winning that fourteen zero um, run, you saw the tempo. I think a yeah, little bit during that fourteen zero run, and, yeah. and, and you saw UVA not being as comfortable playing in that way. And, and I bet, um, aside from those calls or missed calls, you know, I bet the one thing Auburn would say is that hey, we, you know, we needed to, you know, make it the style of play more our game, yeah. um, you know, for the entirety. But um, no, it, 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 it's cool to see, um, you know, and and for me, I think you're going to see. When you see a Final Four of a Michigan State, Texas Tech, UVA, you're going to see more and more coaches want to adopt that style. And yeah, you know we're, we're the opposite. I respect <laughs> that style. Those guys are those guys are great coaches. But more people play that way than play the way we do. So sure. you know I I think it's a different preparation. You know uh, when you go against us, and as we get better at playing that way, get. Um, players that are more adept at playing that way, I think it can be much more effective. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun as we keep seeing that style incorporated implements and moving forward. Coach, I think it's been about a year now, almost on the dot, since the hiring last year. So one year in Miami, again, we take a step back. You're one in the city. Look, you grew up in ATL, yep. went to school upstate New York. Right now you've had one year in South Florida. What stood out to you in your first year down here? Well, a lot, of other, places anything, in, anything. A lot of other places <laughs> in between, too, including Oklahoma, Pittsburgh, Illinois. So it's, yeah. it's been – Nowhere it's, around here. It's been a wild, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. But, um, Miami is a special place. Yeah. FIU is a special place. So I, I really love my time here. I love the people here. Um, I, I love li living here. I love being able to recruit to FIU because we, we have a lot to sell. We, we have a lot to sell in the city. We have a lot to sell in the campus. We have a lot to sell in the university. And uh, now we have a lot to sell in terms of the legacy that we're building. So uh, I'm incredibly fortunate to be here. Um, love being a part of uh, Panther Nation. So uh, just looking forward to the future. Now you guys got to get out on the recruiting trail, bring some guys in. But any, any time to relax? Any trips coming up for you? And, and, and well, <laughs> what's, we got, a, what's in the short term for you, Jeremy? You know, uh, fortunately, we, we have our uh, conference meetings and head coaches meetings in Destin, Florida. Yeah, in, in my May. hometown, yeah. So, yeah, that, 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 that's awesome. I'll look forward to that. And, you know, here and there, I'll, you know, I'll go back and visit family on weekends in Atlanta and, and I just try to enjoy Miami. Well, when you live in paradise, you don't need to go too many other no, places. No, that's true. So. You no need to take any big vacations when, right. it, when you live here. Uh, tell you what, though, we'll keep an eye out. Uh, was scrolling through through your Twitter, which I want to say is not that extensive. <laughs> I easily found uh, the tweet two years ago. Coach, we'll keep an eye out if we see any pie-eating contest here soon. There it is, February 2016. 
Colgate's Pie Eating Contest. <laughs> if FIU's hosting any Toll House Cookie Pie uh, Contest, we'll wow. make sure to enter your name. Wow. I know you want to volunteer and, for this. And, and that, um, that, that tweet definitely still rings true. And <laughs> with my physique the way it is now, I yeah. would dominate it even more. <laughs> but uh, Toll House Pie is, is, is a, um iconic, uh an iconic dish in, in Hamilton, New York. Is it? Colgate, I had no so. idea. Yeah, any, any, anyone from Colgate <laughs> will tell you about the Colgate Inn and the Toll House Pie. So now you know. Awesome. It's trivia. Yeah. <laughs> you know with extra popular. ice cream is yeah. the best way to have oh, we got to get you in some kind of competition with that. Yeah. Coach, appreciate the time. Right. Congrats on a great first Thank year. You. That's appreciate Jeremy Ballard. It. We'll be right back with FIU Cheer and Dance. They took second at Nationals this past weekend. They're elites. We'll talk to them in just a minute on Panther Talk Live. University founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights, it's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. What up, baby? Let's go, spring ball. Ah. Let's go, guys. Go to good strike, good strike. Let's go. Make him hold ass to get you, huh? Monday, go. Good, 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 good. Push up, push up. I know that I motivate him. Motivate him, I'm a that. Inside in front, guys. Go, Daniel. The starting five. Tight in left, a tight in right. Hey, do what you do best. Like, do what you do best. I'm motivated. Yeah, I'm a threat. That's probably how I'm motivated. There we go. There we go. Stay there. Pick it up. Hey, All right, work through him. Up to him. Here we go. Go. Sweat test. And a Swiss cheese from this tank. Whoa. You need that back with them hunters. Don't hit on me, get a bag with them hunters. Don't want baby, you gon' need some more something, cause all of this lavish don't come from Double eight on three, double eight on three. One, two, three, double eight. Let's go. Stronger together. Innovative. Pushing ourselves to think outside the box. We love to compete. Any team. Any time. And any place. Inspiring others through service and achievement. Comfortable leading in a different way. Preparing for life beyond athletics. Determined to achieve our vision. Building the next generation. And we aren't afraid of doing it our way. This is the CUSA way. Let's go! What's up, Panther fans? This is James Morgan, quarterback of your FIU football team. I'm inviting you to come out this Friday, April 12th, to see the Spring Showcase. We need you there. We need you loud. Pause up.
Well, it should be a fun afternoon, fun evening this upcoming Friday. The FIU Football Spring Showcase at Ricardo Silva Stadium. James Morgan and the boys will be back in action here this spring as they conclude their spring practice schedule. Doors open 6 p.m. Going to get the Greeks in as well. The Greek Championship flag football game will be at halftime of this. Should be a fun evening at Ricardo Silva this Friday, the FIU Football Spring Showcase. And uh, this past weekend, a notable weekend for none other an FIU cheer and dance taking second out of 15 at the NCA College Nationals this past weekend in Daytona Beach. What a moment, what a weekend for FIU cheer and dance. And we have some key con contributors who orchestrated that weekend for FIU. Corey Hines in his fifth year at the helm of the cheer program. David Nunez in his third season with FIU. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us, and, and congratulations on an excellent weekend. Thank you so much. Uh, take us you. take us through it, Corey. We'll start with you. I think you guys improved from 11th to 2nd from one year to the next. That's elite. And this is Nationals, second place. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> take us through this past weekend. So this weekend, it wasn't actually from 11th to 2nd in a year-to-year -year basis. We were actually, you compete two days. Mm -hmm. So after prelims, our preliminary round of the competition, uh, we had a few mistakes and were underscored in some categories. So we were actually in 11th place okay. on the first day of Miss Nationals. Misread that tweet. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we actually climbed from 11th place to second within one day. Still a pretty good comeback there. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a tournament bracket. Yeah. We, we, uh, we okay. So bracket. take us through the fundamentals of that. What were you not executing? What did you do better on day two? So on day one, we had a few errors in our stunts. That's the lifts and the building skills that the cheerleaders do. Uh, on that day one, we, we dropped two stunts in our stunt sequence. So when you drop a stunt, whenever someone falls on a tumbling pass, uh, there's typically deductions that take off from your final score. So on day one, we were low-balled on a few categories that we should have gotten a little higher okay. in. And we also had deductions that kind of knocked us out of that top spot. David, take us through uh, what you felt, what, what really made you happy with the dance routine, with what your program was able to do this past week and then execute well. Well, first of all, with our dance program uh, going into the NDA competition, it's seemed as a no-name team because it's really not one of those performing teams. FIU Dazzlers hadn't been uh, performing or competing in over 10 years. Last year was our first year back. So the name's got to be built to be brought up to that, uh, that caliber. Uh, first and foremost, we're a Division One athletics program, yeah. but for dance, we actually compete in Division One A. So now we're going up against Power 5 schools, which have magnet programs or portions of it that are theatrical arts and dance as part of their majors. So we're at a disadvantage coming in from Miami. Now having the uh, talent that we have down here in South Florida, we were able to come together to create what we did and showcase a routine that was uniquely Miami and produce that in the hip hop category. At the same token, we also compete in team performance. At the end of the day, our kids have gone out and gave a phenomenal performance that was not only memorable for the crowd that was there, they received a standing ovation at the end of finals. Uh, we were able to come in second at the, uh, the end of day one of prelims and then move into finals to dance on the band shell, which was our overall goal was to have FRU leave our mark yeah. and uh, showcase the talent we have down here in South Florida. We uh, came in third place in, uh, in hip hop behind 20 time national champion and an 18 time <laughs> national champion. Yeah. So for our first time in ever division one hip hop, it was a, not to say short of a spectacular performance by the kids but at the same token it was a uh, milestone that was done on our first shot out take us through educate us a little bit we're, we're here to learn uh so i don't think most people understand how a cheer or dance program is is built and put together at the collegiate level we all know about our football recruiting and the recruiting rankings and how teams are put together like what butch davis is doing with fiu football when you're trying to build a cheer or dance team how do you do that when maybe the culture hasn't been there in the past when you got there i'll start, start with you I definitely think it's a, a culture that the university in athletics is starting to understand a little bit more. Uh, you know, to, to get strong cheerleaders, to get the cheerleaders and dancers in the program that in turn look great on the sideline and represent the university well are in, are in fact good ambassadors to the program, it takes doing things like nationals. It takes competing. Because a lot of these kids from, come from a competitive background, are athletes growing up, uh, either gymnasts, uh, yeah. competitive cheerleaders and dancers and this being a competitive program is really the icing on the cake to get them to come here as opposed to going away to larger schools schools with more established athletics programs and um, little by little we've been changing that culture once I came to the university uh, about five years ago it was a very small team 
uh, a, a weaker team. Sure. Uh, and I, I changed the focus. I said, you know, we're going to do this with athletics. We're going to make athletics happy. We're going to uphold our status as ambassadors. But I'm going to give you this goal of competition. We're going to train the stunts. We're going to train the gymnastics. We're going we're gonna to work on your body and your strength and conditioning to get you to the caliber of competing as an athlete. Once we started announcing that, once we went out to schools and got those kids who were interested in competing, who were competitive, I think that's when the culture for this team started to sure. change. You know, that first year was rough, but after that first year, kids all over South Florida and then kids from outside of Florida as well started saying, hey, FIU has a competitive team. They're strong competitors. Let's make FIU that decision. Now, David, let me ask you. We were at the uh, we were at the FIU golf tournament the other the other week uh, in Turnberry Isle, and some of the, the cheer and dance team was was at the hole. I think it was me and Merville Melendez, uh, the baseball coach, and some of the cheer squad was there as golfers came around, and they were just telling us about the practice schedule. I mean, you guys practice a lot, I think five, six, seven hours stints at some time. Look, I was a D1 athlete. I could never go five, six, seven hours. I mean, you guys put in work, but it, obviously it pays off. But I don't think people understand the hours that go into this. Well, like Corey said, first and foremost, we're ambassadors for the school, and that's one of our, our highlights is everybody sees us at events. They'll see us here at GC. They'll see us at the President's Banquet. They'll see us at a charity event. And the, our, our athletes are doing that at all times. The main thing is our dancers and cheerleaders are athletes. Um, they are running anywhere from a, starting at 3 o'clock a practice and leaving at 9.30 at night, sometimes 10 o'clock at night. In between that, they are actually going to the athletic trainers here at FIU, and they're doing strength and conditioning and building with them to make sure it will re you know, reduce injuries along the way. At the end of the day, our dancers are defying gravity at all times, same as our cheerleaders. You are flipping, jumping. You are using your bodies in ways that it was really never intended to use. When most people think of, oh, they're the cheerleaders and the dancers, they're only there for, to get people peppy. At the end of the no, day, not at all. <laughs> what they do is short of miraculous. Um, their turn sequences, their jump sequences, their tumbling sequences are all things that actually defy gravity. And that's something that we want to have uh, a rapport with FIU Athletics, continue to move it forward and build those programs. When you're talking about the teams that we compete against in the uh, Power 5 categories, squads are 60 and 70 deep where they can take their top 20 and compete them and the other ones will handle the appearances, the basketball games, the football games. Yeah. Our dazzlers are 25 of them. They handle everything the athletics wants, everything the school wants, plus they also do their competitions. I saw, I saw a clip on Twitter, and I loved this. This, this resonated uh, with me. I think you guys were, were at Olive Garden uh, at some point this past weekend, and, and we ha the, there was the collection of the phones. Let's, pl let's <laughs> play the clip. This reminds me of my cross-country days. We would always go to Olive Garden, and around 2009 when the iPhones came out, so we got to start putting them up when we go to dinner. That, that's a good tradition I like right there. <laughs> you get the team to talk to each other. So Corey actually uh, has been doing that for quite some time where whenever it's dinner time, it's family time, and everybody is uh, there to speak to each other and not be on their phones. Uh, I took it a little further. I wanted my kids <laughs> to be very focused uh, this weekend. Yeah. So since the minute we got to competition on Wednesday night, their phones were locked up into my safe in the room. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the coaching staff pretty much had their phones over yeah. the nighttime throughout the day. They would get it back to touch base with parents. We had a family group chat where the parents knew exactly what was going on. Uh, one of the coaching staff, my wife, was actually keeping in contact with all of the family members and let them know updates and how the kids were doing. And then they would get them back for a little bit for homework, yeah. writing a paper, and then go back to work for a competition. I bet you they probably, you know what, when, when they get the phones back, they're probably, you know what, it was, it was good not to have the phones for a little a bit. Little decompression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually had one day our screen yeah. time went down 59% or yeah. something, whatever that meant. You but. can survive without the cell phone. It has been proven by FIU Cheer and Dance. Yes. <laughs> well, guys, you both do a lot of great work with the program. You didn't need a second place finish at Nationals to validate that, but it feels pretty good in the meantime. I'm <laughs> I guess Thank congratulations. Thank you so much. On a top three finish. Congrats. Thank Thank Corey, so David, doing great things here with FIU Cheer and Dancing. I think we got about like half the cheer squad right behind the cameras here <laughs> enjoying the, the La morning. Yeah. Last little tidbit, we have auditions coming up. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have there auditions coming up are. for dance on May 4th and 5th. Uh, we're looking to start the new season off with a bang. Uh, we're we're going to be doing whatever bit of recruiting we can down here in the local South Florida area. So if anybody's looking to come be part of the Dazzlers, May 4th and 5th, and we have audition prep classes coming up this Wednesday, next Monday, and the 29th. And then Cheer has... Cheer will be May 10th and 11th. Uh, that is the weekend of Mother's Day, but it'll be that Friday and Saturday of Mother's Day. So we're asking everyone who is interested from the university, whether you be a former cheerleader, whether you be a strong athlete who thinks you'd like to try it, uh, gymnasts, and especially our males. We are always looking for more males to come out, join the program, and see what it's like. I guarantee you anything that you have, any preconceived notions you have about cheerleading, you never know. 
I hope this works and doesn't end up being awkward. Can we get a little FIU chant in the show to finish off the show for the Karens? Here we go. I, I, U, U, F, I, U, F, F, I, F, I, U, 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 F, I,